Good Sunday morning. Let's all stand together. Isn't it wonderful to all be together again? Amen. There's many been battling sickness all week long. We've got a few out today, but we're just believing that we are here, right place, right time, and God's going to do great things this morning amongst us today, right? Amen. Why don't we just lift up our hands this morning? Let's just ask God to fill this atmosphere with his presence. Lord Jesus, we thank you for the opportunity to stand in your place this morning, God. We ask, God, that you would just fill this place with your presence and your spirit, God, with your power and your anointing, God. Let it be in this place this morning. Oh, Jesus, we just give you everything today, God. We clear our minds. We clear our hearts. We surrender everything to you today that you might have your perfect will done in this place today. We bless you. We thank you for the great things that you are about to do in the name of Jesus. We stand and lift up our hands for the joy of the Lord is our strength. We bow down and worship you now. How great, how awesome is he. Together we sing. Yes, the earth is 
Will I 
bring our thoughts together. I, I wonder today, can you only imagine? Can you only imagine? We, we walked in this place today battling fears and battling sickness and battling doubts. and, and we, just, we just battle those in our human nature. They war with our spirit. And we still came into this place this morning and, and we can feel the presence of God as we begin to lift up his name. But can you imagine standing in the literal presence of Almighty God and all sickness has disappeared and there are no more fears. There is no more oppression against your mind. There's no more depression pushing your spirit back. There's nothing but the presence of a loving, mighty God. Surrounded by your glory, what will my heart feel? Will I dance for you, Jesus? Or in all of you be still? Will I stand in your presence? To my knees will I fall? Will I sing hallelujah? Will I be able to speak at all? Surrounded by your glory, what will my heart feel? Will I dance for you, Jesus? Or in love you be still? Will I stay in your presence? To my knees will I fall? Will I sing hallelujah? Will I be able to speak at all? I can only I can only imagine. 
when there be no more night I'm going to a city where Jesus is the light the trumpet's gonna sound and I'll be called away I'm going to a city It's gonna sound and I'll be called away. I'm going to a city someday. I'm going to a city where there'll be no more night. I'm going to a city where Jesus is the light. The trumpet's gonna sound. Where there be no more night I'm going to a city Where Jesus is the night The trumpet's gonna sound And I'll be called away I'm going to a city someday Soon and very soon We are going to see
to the house of the Lord this morning. Thank you for making your way. I know there's a lot of people that are not feeling well and they're out. There seems to be a virus that's hitting communities all over British Columbia and it's not COVID. It's something else. So we're glad you're here. Amen. What a great time that we had last week. Amen. Thank you to everybody that was here, everybody that contributed, everybody that made their way, everybody that showed up. We're thankful for what the Lord did. We had miracles. We had uh, people receiving the baptism of the Holy Ghost. We've seen people baptized in Jesus' name. God, God bless you. you. May be seated just for a moment. We have a few people here today that we are so thankful that they have. Now, next week, we're going to be handing out some more certificates. But this week, for the people that are here, we're going to hand out some certificates of baptism. And so thankful that some of our young uh, ladies and young men we're baptized, and we're so thankful for that. So I'm wondering if Sister Sadie Lambert can come up at this time, if she's here, baptized last week in the name of Jesus, received the baptism of the Holy Ghost. Will you give her a hand clap? Come on up here, Sadie. God bless you. Stand right up here. Amen. Isn't this awesome? Sadie's a Bible quizzer, and she's doing a great job in Bible quizzing. Her older brother, Louis Lambert, Louis, Louis, Louis. Come on up here, Louis. Come here, dude. <laughs> God bless you, man. Amen. And then, the, the, not the youngest one, but he is a little bit, not Claire is the youngest, and she's going to be next here soon, I know it. But I wonder if Michael Lambert can come up at this time. Mike, come on up. God bless you. Give him a hand clap. Amen. Now, is Serafina here? Serafina, where are you? Where is she? There she is. Serafina LePage. God bless you, young lady. Amen. Stand right there. Amen. We're so thankful what God is doing on our kids and the hunger and the desire that we see in our children. And so thankful for our Sunday school. Aren't you so thankful for our Sunday school? Amen. Now, I know there's no Sunday school today. It's family Sunday. So everybody gets to join together in the upstairs, and we're thankful for that. But we've got one more that we want to congratulate on her baptism, receiving the baptism of the Holy Ghost, baptized in Jesus' name. Delilah Schaefer, if you'll come up at this time. Amen. We love this young lady. Come on up here, girl. Amen. God bless you, sweetie. Give these young people a hand clap. Look at them. Aren't they awesome? Amen. God bless you guys. Amen. We're so thankful that you are here. We have many things that are happening around the Pentecostals of Fort St. John. And uh, we usually try to stay busy as a church. And so we want to make you aware of some announcements. We, well, first, we want to thank you for your giving of your tithes and your offerings. Uh, it's what helps us keep going around here and growing, and we've got more going and more growing to do. So we need your giving if it's, we're going to be gro going and growing. And so we thank you for giving of your tithes and your offerings. You can give in person today at the offering box upstairs. There's a machine there that you can contribute, fill out a tithing envelope. If you don't know, at the end of the year, you will receive a tax receipt that will help you get some income tax back because Canada still honors charitable donations. So it's going to help you out a little bit. So giving to God, you get back through. Even the government gives back when you give to God. That's something that never happens. So thank you for your giving of your tithes and your offering. And also you can give online at giving at penfsj.com. I believe we're going to see a great Save Our Children offering come in. Thank you those that have already given. I believe that we can hit that $10,000 mark for our church. Amen. Look what God's doing in our kids. 
You can't invest too much in the next generation. And we're thankful for that. This church believes in the next generation, and we invest in the next generation. So thank you for your tithes and your offerings. This afternoon, we are happy to announce that there is Filipino support ministries at 3 p.m. in the Recovery Center, and we're thankful for what God is doing in our Filipino support ministries. We love our Filipino support ministry. Amen. Love Jerry and Susan Lau and thankful for what God is doing there. Tuesday, it is good to have the Mallies back with us from Jamaica. Amen. God knows what he is doing and we don't understand it all, all the time. And of course, we uh, announce and we need to continue to pray for Sister Pusey, the Puseys, and for the church in Flanker, St. James, that God would continue to direct them and help them. And I believe that God already is doing that. But the Lord knew that Wilford and Blanche needed to be in Jamaica at that time, right in the middle of their trip. Pastor Pusey passed away. Uh, we, nobody's seen it coming but the Lord knew that they were there for such a time as this, and they were there for a support and help, and I don't know what Sister Lorna Pusey would have done without you guys. And so we're thankful that you're home and that you're back, but continue to pray for them over in Jamaica. But on Tuesday, we have prayer. Uh, Brother Wilford is our prayer minister here at the church, and so he'll be ministering on, uh, I'm sharing a little bit, I'm sure, on Tuesday night in the devotion, but we do have prayer at 6 p.m. in the sanctuary upstairs. And then we've got Changing Lanes Recovery and Support Group down in the uh, Recovery Center at 7 p.m. And if you've never been a part of that or you're curious, please come and join us and find out what's going on. We're doing some more breakout sessions, I think, this week. I'm not sure. And so uh, we have great discussion, and we just kind of walk together with God. That's what we're doing in the Changing Lane Support and Recovery. So if you want some help in your walk with God, come with us as we talk about the steps that can help you walk with God. Wednesday night, there's Bible study. Uh, the cafe is open, 545, Bible quizzing at seven at 530. Um, we need to be here for that. Actually, and if there's any adult Bible quizzers that are going to be part of the tournament on May 1st next week, we need to see you after church. I'm um, going to get a pep talk so that we can somehow muster up the courage to beat these kids if we can do it. But uh, we do need to go over some things. And so immediately after church, if you can find your way out to the recovery center to meet with Sister Janine, that would be great. Um, but Bible quizzing at 5.30. We do have Kids Church and Youth in the Youth Center at 7 o'clock while we meet upstairs uh, for Bible study. And so Brother Aaron is going to be sharing with us, uh, amen, some things this week, and we're excited about that. Thursday as well, we've got Foundations at 7 p.m. I told you we were a busy church, and I meant it. We have a lot of things going on. If you don't know what Foundations is about, why don't you come and check it out? Because it really is, goes through the Word of God to see uh, what we can all stand on. Of course, we know that there's only one foundation that we have, and that's Jesus Christ, who is the chief cornerstone. And so everything that we do is built on Jesus Christ. Amen? So 7 p.m. If you're interested, please talk to uh, Brother Aaron about that. We have youth next Friday at 7 p.m. as well. Uh, stay tuned for Facebook for what's going on with that. This week, a few of us are making our way down to men's retreat. We're excited about that. Pray for us as we travel. Uh, but if there's anybody that's interested in ladies retreat, I need you to see my wife, ladies only, please, uh, see my wife after church. Um, over, right here, right upstairs. If you're interested, see her. Don't wait till you go downstairs. See her right after altar call and talk to her. Tell her that you're interested. She'll give you the details uh, right after church. Amen. Next Sunday service at 1030 and Sunday school. Sunday school is in next week, but next week we also have something else going on, which is May 1st. We've got our uh, 5 p.m. to 8 p.m. Bible quizzing tournament and fundraising dinner. If you haven't noticed, the Bible quiz team has been going around selling tickets for that fundraiser. And how many has got tickets? Actually, how many hasn't got tickets? Bible quizzers. Okay, you check out Bible quizzers who doesn't have tickets and go after them. I'm just teasing you. Nobody's going to put up their hand. But if you, if you can, after church, the Bible quizzers are around. And this is, a, this is an awesome thing that we do for our church, and we're excited about it. But we are going to be putting on a tournament where the kids are going to be quizzing against some of the seniors, some of the older people like myself, and it's going to be fun. And so please see 
uh, some of those kids after, after church. Amen. Can we all stand? We're going to go to the Lord by way of prayer. And we're going to pray for those that are not here because uh, there's a sickness and a virus that is going through. And there's a lot of people that wanted to be here, but they're not here today. So we want to pray for them. Uh, we also have a list of prayer requests in this pulpit of, of people that need uh, a touch from God. Let's not forget to pray for our nation of Canada. Pray for our government, federal and provincial. And because God needs to move in our country. Everybody believe that? God needs to move in our country. Also pray for the peace of Israel. The Bible tells us that we need to do that. Pray for this church and its leadership. Pray for one another. And I know you might be uncomfortable doing it, but as we go to the Lord in prayer, I wonder if you could put your hand on the person, or the shoulder of the person that's next to you, and we can bind together and pray at this time. Lord, we're so thankful for your mercy and your grace. We thank you, God, for the opportunity to be here this morning. Thank you for everybody that's here. I pray, God, you touch those that are not here, those that are watching online. Perhaps they're sick in their body. Perhaps this flu and virus is going through their home. God, we pray for recovery right now in Jesus' name. Anybody that's here that's not feeling well, God, we pray that you would touch them in the name of Jesus. God, we're all gathered here together, God, today to receive something from you. So touch our hearts, I pray, today, and help us not to leave here the same way that we came. Touch our nation of Canada, God, and its leadership. Lord, I pray for the nation of Israel, God. Lord, that you would bless them in the peace of Jerusalem, I pray, in the name of Jesus. Touch our town and its leadership, our church and its leadership, God. And I pray for my brothers and my sisters that are gathered together here this morning. We love you, God, and we're so thankful for you. We give you praise and glory and honor in Jesus' name. Amen. Will you give the Lord a hand clap of praise? Amen. It is so good to have everybody here. If you see somebody that you don't know, amen, why don't you turn around and shake somebody's hand and welcome them out to the house of God this morning. Amen. It's just good to have everybody here. We welcome you to joining us online. Make a mention of somebody online and tell us that you're around. You're here. Amen, amen, amen. Okay, I will say that. Okay. Okay. Why don't you find somebody else, amen, and shake their hand. It's just good. This is Family Sunday, so we want everybody to feel welcome. I made a mistake in the announcements. The Bible quizzing meeting is upstairs, amen, so if you can remember that. It's just good to have everybody here this morning, amen. Sarah just reminded me that we have our dessert auction May 15th as well, so remember that. Lots of things happening. The meeting's upstairs. I can't take any more announcements today. I am full. My mind is on overload. Amen, amen. God bless you. You may be seated. Kaylee, I wonder if you come up at this time. Come on up, Kaylee. Bring the kids. Amen. Amen. Come on up, guys. Amen. This is Family Sunday, and we are going to do another family dedication. And we're so thankful for what God is doing in Kaylee's life. Amen. God is doing great things in Kaylee's life. And, and most of us know here, it's, it's, not, it's, it's, a, it's a battle to serve God for ourselves because it is a good fight of faith, but then it is a, also a battle that we face trying to keep our kids and uh, train our kids in the right path to go. But it can be done. 
It can be done with proper supports, and it can be done with the help of God. And I'm so thankful that Kaylee has decided that she wants to raise her children up in the fear and the love of God. And we're so thankful that Kaylee, we want to congratulate you on that. And the best thing, the best thing that we can do as a parent is, is to really join our families with a church family. Because I do believe that it does take a community to raise a child, and thank God that you're a part of a good, godly community. And we're excited about that. And it has a profound effect when, you have, when you're surrounded by people that will support you and that will love you and think the same way that you do about the Word of God and about raising kids in the sight of God. So it's good to have that support, and we congratulate you on that. And my, Maya and Isaiah, that's an awesome names. That's a good Bible name. Um, they're going to have the best chance of choosing to serve God. We don't baptize infants uh, because we believe that the best way that a child can make their own decision to serve God is what you do as a parent. And so the best way that, to do that is train them up and raise them up in a church family so that when they do get older, as we've seen these kids receiving the baptism of the Holy Spirit, baptized in Jesus' name, they will choose to do that when they get to the age of understanding as well. So what you're doing as a mom is such a great Great thing, staying, keeping our kids away from the lifestyles of the world because the world's trying to corrupt our kids, trying to infiltrate them. You know what? They don't like, the world doesn't like the fact that we preach the truth of the word of God uh, because they want to indoctrinate them in their ways. And I don't mind saying that because that's exactly what they're trying to do. But we want to tell our kids about Jesus and about the right way. Amen. What it means in the word of God. What a, I'll just leave it there. Amen. I believe that they're going to make up their minds to serve the Lord. The children of Israel um, were intentional about raising their children. And that's what we have to be is intentional. And not only in Deuteronomy when Moses t told the children of Israel about the Shema, which was, Hear, O Israel, the Lord our God is one Lord, and to love the Lord your God with all your heart, mind, soul, and strength. The one thing that Moses told uh, the children of Israel was to tell your kids about it. Tell your kids about it when they're going to bed. Tell them Bible stories when they're going to bed. When they wake up, let them know that God loves them. Let them know that they can serve the Lord even from this age. That was the Shema that, that they told uh, the children of Israel to tell them about the Lord when you're going to bed and tell them about the Lord when you're getting uh, back up again. The first real dedication that we see in the scripture is of Samuel and his mother, Hannah, that was the first dedication that we have, the example that we see, and we can read about it in 1 Samuel chapter 1 and 11. And Hannah made a solemn promise, said, Lord Almighty, look at me, your servant, and see my trouble and remember me. Don't forget me. If you give me a son, I promise I will dedicate him to you for his whole life. And that's what you're doing with Maya and, Az and Isaiah today. Uh, you're, you're making a promise that you are going to dedicate them to the Lord their whole life. Samuel was brought up in church, and Samuel became one of the greatest prophets that ever lived. And because he was brought up in the house of the Lord. So, Kaylee, this dedication that you're doing today, it is significant. And it is a promise. And I, look, we all make mistakes. I've made mistakes. We've made mistakes as parents. We all make mistakes. But it's a promise that we are going to do everything that we can do to dedicate our children's whole life to God. So I'm going to ask you a couple questions. Do you fully understand and you can answer with, I do. Do you fully understand and accept the responsibility that God has entrusted you with? Do you promise to love and care for these children physically, emotionally, and spiritually in accordance to the word of God? I do. In the presence of God and these witnesses, you, Kaylee Lowry, have dedicated Maya Beatty, Beatty? Beatty. Maya Beatty and Isaiah, Isaiah, Isaiah Stafford as holy and set apart unto God. Amen. Dad, I want you to come at this time. And we're going to pray. And I wonder if you could stand with me. And we're going to pray for this family. Pray for Kaylee as a mom. Pray for this young man. Maya, can, can you come and see me for a second, sweetie pie? Baby, come on in. We're going to pray for this beautiful family. Pray for Kaylee as a mom. Can you just reach your hands towards this platform right now as we pray a blessing on this family? God, we're so thankful for your mercy and your grace. We're so thankful for what you're doing in Kaylee's life and the children, God. 
God, we pray right now that you continue, Lord Jesus, to help her, God, through whatever she's going to face, Lord. The good times, the bad times, God, the struggles, Lord. You're always with her. You'll never leave her or forsake her. God, as she can raise these beautiful children up, God, as she's dedicated them to you, she can raise them up in your word, God, and to serve you so that when they get older, God, they will make that decision to follow you all the days of their life and dwell in your house forever. God, we pray a blessing on, Lord, this family right now. Keep your hand on Kaylee. In the name of Jesus, we pray. Amen. Will you give the Lord a hand clap of praise? Good job. Amen. And Kaylee, we wanted to give you a couple certificates that you can sign. And also, as we talked about, these are little Bible stories that you can read the kids every night and talk about Jesus every morning. Amen. We love you, Kaylee. We support you. Amen. When we're praying for you and we're with you in Jesus' name. Give the Lord a hand clap of praise. Amen. So thankful. Amen. For parents that will dedicate their kids to the Lord. Because someday, come on guys, I need your help. Get up here. I can't sing by myself. Someday, we are going to heaven. I made up my mind. I can't take anything of this world with me. I can't take any possessions. I can't take my truck. I can't take my car. I can't take my job. I can't take any money that I have in the bank. And it's not much. I might be able to put it in my pocket on the way up. That's how much I got. But this is one thing that I can take. And it's one thing that you can take with you as well. You can take your kids with you. You can take your family. Amen. You can make up your mind that you're going to serve God because we are going to heaven. Have you made up your mind today that you're going to make heaven your home? Amen. Give the Lord a hand clap of praise. Let's sing this amen today. Amen. When we all get to heaven, what a day of rejoicing that will be. Sing the wondrous love of Jesus. Sing His mercy and His grace. Right and blessed, He prepared for us a place. For when we all get to heaven, what a day of rejoicing that will be. When we all see Jesus, we will sing and shout the victory. Oh, when we all get 
get to heaven. What a day of rejoicing there will be when we all see Jesus. We will sing and shout the victory. What a day of rejoicing that will be. Amen. I want to thank our great music and worship team. Amen. What a great job that they do every Sunday. Amen. God bless you. You may be seated. Amen. I feel like the Lord has given me something on my heart, and I know that all of our kids are up, and I appreciate all of you parents. Amen. Having your kids with you because it is an honor and it is a privilege for us to have our children with us to the house of God. Amen. And I, I never, ever want to take it for granted the opportunity to have our children with us. And glad to have my son's grandson with me this morning. And my parents, my wife, my daughter-in-law. I'm just so thankful to be in the house of the Lord. It's good to have all my church family here with me today, too. You have become a part of our extended family, and we're so thankful for that. What a great time that we had last week. What a memorable moment that those moments, those, those revival services were. Amen. And how many felt like God did something special inside of your spirit this last week? Amen. Do you feel like God did something special in your life and in your home? Amen. And I believe that we had several people receive the baptism of the Holy Spirit, and we're so thankful for that. I believe that lives were altered, lives were changed um, because of the presence of God and the Word of God. But you know what? It took uh, something on your behalf as well. You responded also when God called. You responded when you felt the prompting of God's Spirit for you to reach out. Because God is always going to be a gentleman. He's never ever going to force something upon us. He's never ever going to give us anything that we don't want. That's why we say it's the gift of the Holy Ghost. It is a gift. It's given to us freely. It's a gift. Amen. And I'm so thankful for the gifts that God gives. Every good gift and perfect gift is from above. Amen. And so thank you for being a part of that revival. Amen. But revival does continue. It continues, amen. It doesn't have to just be confined to a set of services. It can continue every single day. You can experience new things in God. And I want to experience new things in God. I, I, I want to have a, a moments with God where it's just God, me and God having moments as well. I'm so thankful that moments that we can have together, but I love those times that I can spend with God as well and have moments with Him. Matthew chapter 17 and verse number 1 the story goes like this, after six days, Jesus taketh Peter, James, and John, his brother, and bringeth him up into a high mountain apart, and was transfigured before them, and his face did shine as the sun. And his raiment was white as the light, and behold, there appeared unto them Moses and Elias talking with him. Then he answered Peter and said unto Jesus, Lord, it is good for us to be here. If thou wilt, let us make here three tabernacles, one for thee and one for Moses and Elias. While he yet spake, behold, a bright cloud overshadowed them, and behold, a voice out of the cloud came out of the cloud, which said, This is my beloved Son, in whom I am well pleased. Hear ye him. And when the disciples heard it, they fell on their face and were sore afraid. And Jesus came and touched them and said, Arise and be not afraid. And when they lifted up their eyes, they saw no man save Jesus only. Can you turn to your neighbor and say, Jesus only? Jesus only. He's the only one that we need. He's the only one that we need. Amen. And aren't you thankful for mountaintop experiences with God? We just talk about, I'm thankful for mountaintop experiences with God, where God allows your spirit to soar to new heights in the supernatural, and you experience things, and you see things that you have never seen before, and, and you go places in God that you have never been before, and you are just amazed and in awe and wonder of the presence of God. I love those mountaintop experiences. And God takes us to those places. God brings us to those places. And those places are necessary in our growth. <coughs> Excuse me. 
Yesterday I was able to go into the mountains with, with Cody and with the kids and with Braxton to enjoy a day of sledding. Now, we were joking as we were picking up Braxton yesterday morning with Aaron. Most people are driving away from the snow, but Cody is always seems to be driving towards the snow. That's the way Cody is. Thanks, Josh. But while I was up there and we were enjoying the scenery, I made sure that I took the time to enjoy everything that I was seeing around me. The picture, the beautiful scenery picture that God had painted before me. The majestic height and glory of the mountains and the deep and lush fullness of the valley. I mean, you could see it clearly, God's creation and God's handiwork. I took note when I, when I summited one of the slopes and, and was able to get to the top of a mountain. I, I took note and I thought about it while I was there. I, I really did try yesterday. I'm getting older and I can't do everything that the young kids can do. And so I just puttered along and kind of enjoyed the scenery, to be honest with you. But one of the things that I took note when I was at the top of the mountain is the sparsity of vegetation that was at that height. There's not a lot that grows on the top of the mountain. Also, when I was up there, the wind was different than it was at the valley, and it was at a higher level. And I was reminded once again how awesome it is to experience all that the mountaintops have to offer, but how impossible it would be to live there. And if I was to stay up there for any amount of time, if I was to spend any, if I wanted to make camp up there, if I wanted to spend a few nights up there, then it would be only made possible from the supply that was gathered in what the valley had to offer. You see how important it is? Mountaintop experiences are so important to us. But valley experiences, they add so much value to our life. Because with the, without those valley experiences, there's no way that we could be able to survive at the top of the mountain. Amen. And so you can never forget your valley experiences. Sure, you might not like them very much and you might not be able to see that much. And the, the view might be a little bit different in the valley than it was at the mountaintop. But you need those valley experiences. You need to gain the strength and the sources of sustainment you're going to have on the mountaintop you'll receive in the valley. I also realized that if I was going to go from mountaintop to mountaintop and while we were up there, we could see the vastness of the mountains and how we could see mountaintop to mountaintop to mountaintop. But in order for me to get from mountain to mountain, there's no way that I would be able to escape traversing the valley. So if you are going to have experiences with God, if you're going to have those moments with God, those mountaintop experiences with God, then you've got to remember you must go through the valleys. We've got to go through the valleys. We sing a song, and I love it, that the God of the mountain is still God in the valley. The God of the good times is still God in the bad times. And the God of the day is still God in the night. Don't ever forget it, no matter where you're at right now. I, I just added this little piece in here. This is not the total subject matter that I'm going to discuss this morning, but I felt like I wanted to encourage somebody that's here this morning. Don't forget the same God that you felt when you were in the presence of God and in awe of God is the same God that you still have with you when you can't feel anything at all. He's still there. He's still just as close as he ever was. Amen. He's not far from any one of us, the Bible says. And Paul says, in him we live and move and have our being in him. Amen. I taught on Wednesday night living an altered life. And if I could add an important point that we have to remember, living an altered life, if you're going to live in the power of resurrection... The power of that coming alive means something's got to die. That's why we have to live an altered life. That's why we have to offer something, give something of ourselves in order for us to be resurrected again and lifted up again. But also another note that I want to make is Jesus showed us that we have to go down before we can go up. Our creator came down from heaven in the form of a man so that he could ascend back to the throne as savior of all mankind. He had to come down first before he could go back up as our savior. 
Jesus submitted himself. We, we celebrated that time last week where Jesus submitted himself to be beaten down with whips and scourgings and he was spit on and he was mocked. He went through all of that. He went down and submitted himself to all of that. He didn't have to. But why did he do that? So that he could carry that old rugged cross up Calvary's hill and die for our sin. He allowed himself to be beaten down so he could carry that cross up to Golgotha, the place of the skull, where everything in our lives changes forever. Amen. It is because of the old rugged cross. Our whole mindset, it is a place of the skull. It is a place where man's mind can be transformed from an old nature to a new nature. Amen. That's what the cross was all about, but he had to go down before he could go back up. And thankfully, he went down into the grave to be buried so that on that third day, he could rise triumphantly with the keys of death, hell, and the grave. Amen. He did all that so that we could have life and have life more abundantly. He did all that so that we could one day make heaven our home and live with him forever. That's why he came down, so that we could go up. What a God that we serve. Amen. Amen. Can you give that God a hand? Clap of praise this morning. Amen. I see Jesus only as my Savior. I see Jesus only as my Savior. Now, in this story, Jesus didn't use a snowmobile to get there. He went into a high mountain, the Bible says, but I don't know how he got there except for walking. But according to our scripture, he did take three of his disciples to the summit of that mountain. And I always wondered when I thought about it, when I read the scripture, there was 12 disciples, yet there was only three that went to the top of the mountain. Why did the other nine not go up there with him? Why did they, why did they stay at the bottom of the mountain, what was it that maybe Jesus didn't see in them that he saw in the other three that caused him to invite the three and leave the nine? Now, I don't have the answer. I've wondered it. Why do some people experience the height of the mountaintop experiences with Jesus and others do not? Why is that? Why do some people experience revival and other people do not? I have speculations, no clear answer. The only thing that I know for sure for myself, and I think you need to make up your mind for yourself, I can't do anything about anybody else. But if Jesus, wherever Jesus is going, if he's going up to the top of the mountain, then I want to make sure that I'm going with him. That's the only thing that I've made up my mind. I can't do anything about anybody else except trying to encourage you, keep encouraging you. But here's what I know, that if Jesus is going wherever he's going, I want to go with him. And you can make up your mind to go with him, no matter where he's going. If he's traversing to the top of a mountain, then you're going to the top of the mountain. If he leads you into the valley of the shadow of death, he'll be with you. His rod and his staff, they will comfort you. They will be with you. He'll never leave you or forsake you. Wherever he's going, then I'm going with him. If you read our story, while the disciples on the top of the mountain were experiencing transfiguration, I don't know if you can imagine, or if you and I could imagine what was going on at the top of that mountain, but the Bible says that Jesus was transfigured. I believe that his human veil of flesh just kind of went away while he took on the full glory and majesty. The Bible says that he was glowing white with raiment, and there stood with him Moses and Elijah, I mean, these three human men, they seen something that was so powerful and that was so great that, that, that really it was almost too much to imagine. You know how we sang that song, I can only imagine? I mean, I can only imagine an experience with God just like this. But here they were up there at the top of the mountain and they were experiencing transfiguration. I mean, this is something that is powerful while the disciples at the bottom of the mountain If you read the story, they were facing a devil. A devil that they could not get rid of. So while three were up there experiencing things in God and majesty and glory in God up on the top of the mountain, the other group, 
The larger group was at the base of the mountain, and they're facing a devil that they can't defeat. One of my favorite preachers, I had the opportunity to spend some time with him in January, and I was really thankful for that, Jason Sisko. He pointed out one time, and I remember a message, and it stuck with me so clearly all of my life. The importance of making the trip to the top of the mountain with Jesus is because the revelation that is given in the mountain will be needed for what we will face in the valley. I said the revelation that you receive at the top of the mountain. That's why it's so important that if God's moving, if the Spirit of God is moving, that you get into the flow of it. You respond to it. Don't just be a spectator, but move from being a spectator to a participant. And I want to put that invitation out to anybody. And I, I'm not gauging the way that anybody responds. I'm not judging the way that anybody responds. All that I can do is to encourage you that no matter what your response is, is that you respond. You respond. You go from just being a spectator when God is moving to being a participant in what God is doing. Do you agree with that? It's so, it's so awesome for us to do that. Amen. Just because you didn't go up the mountain, and here's what's so important for us that I, need, I think we need to understand, it's just because you didn't go up to the top of the mountain and get that experience and perhaps even get the weapons that you need, uh, that you need to, to face the enemy, doesn't mean that you're not going to have a battle and you won't need those weapons when you face the devil. Just because you don't go to the top, is what I'm saying, doesn't mean you won't face the enemy. Jason Sisko proved the point like this. While Jesus was on the mountain, he was transfigured. We see him talking with two individuals. We see him talking with Moses and Elijah. And the disciples witnessed all this. And when you think about Moses and Elijah, there are very prominent earthly elements that are attached to each of these individuals that we can see in Scripture. If you look at Moses' life, Moses, here Moses was. The Egyptians were trying to annihilate all of the, all of the young boys that were in Egypt. And here uh, Amram and Jochebed, they are Moses' parents. They made a little boat of bulrushes, and they put Moses in the water on the Nile River. He floats on the water down the Nile River and floats in to where uh, sorry, uh, Pharaoh's daughter is bathing. She draws him out of the water. In fact, that's what Moses' name means, is to be drawn out of the water. She draws Moses out of the water, and he becomes a prince in Egypt. The story goes on. You'll see where, where, where Moses, he, he, on the way out of, of, of Egypt and delivering the uh, children of Israel on the way out, he parts the waters of the Red Sea with his staff. He comes into the wilderness and he, he finds water in the desert. He speaks to the rock and water comes out. In fact, he makes a mistake and he strikes the rock. Water still comes out, but that keeps him from going into the promised land. What's your point, preacher? The element that's attached, the earthly element that's attached to Moses is water. Remember that. What does Moses represent? Let's, ha let's have everybody say it because wa I want you all to get it. What does Moses represent? Thank you. Water. And then we have Elijah on the other hand. Elijah is known as a prophet of fire. I mean, he's fiery. Fire fell from heaven and consumed the altar at Mount, Mount Carmel. If you remember it, you have 400 prophets of Baal. And there, 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 there wants to be a test of whose God is going to answer by fire. Those prophets of Baal, they gather around that, that altar and they start to do their sacrifices all day long. They start cutting themselves. They start crying out. And here Elijah is like, well, perhaps your God is sleeping or perhaps he went on a vacation because he's not answering you. Finally, they gave up. Elijah takes buckets of water and dumps it on the altar. And then he says, I think it's a 60-word prayer. And fire falls from heaven and consumes everything on the altar. Elijah also at the end of his life when Elisha was following him and, and, went, and seen him go into heaven, a chariot of fire and horses of fire came to pick him up. Can you imagine? What element of earth was Elijah associated with? Fire. 
So here we got Moses, which is water. And we've got Elijah, which is fire. This is on the mountain of transfiguration. They're receiving something so special from God. And on that mountain, we see the glorious revelation of Jesus Christ with Moses, who signifies water, and Elijah, signifying fire. And in the valley, the disciples are dealing with the devil that they can't cast out. Let's read about it in Matthew chapter 17 and 14. At the foot of the mountain, a large crowd was waiting for them. And a man came and knelt before Jesus and said, Lord, have mercy on my son. He has seizures and suffers terribly. He often falls into the fire and into the water. And I brought him to your, your disciples, but they could not heal him. You might think it's coincidence, but I don't. I don't think it's coincidence. I don't think that it's just a part of the story that's irrelevant. I believe it's something that you and I, and children, I want you to understand this. That's why you need to be a part of a church that is on fire. You need to be a part of a church that is having a move of the Holy Ghost. Because there are things that are happening in our world that we need God to help us pick up while we're having a move of the Holy Ghost. What's your best way? What's your best uh, answer to deal with an ungodly world? You just make sure you keep yourself close to where God is. Keep yourself close to the presence of God. Keep yourself close to where God is transforming things. And God is moving things. Keep yourself close to what God is doing. And just because you don't go to the mountain to get the weapons doesn't mean that you won't face the battle where you're going to need those weapons to defeat the enemy. That's why, I, you know what, I don't like when you people are on the fringes. I don't like when people are not getting what they need when God is giving it out. Because I know that there's going to be an attack. There's going to be something that comes against. Because, look, the enemy only gets revelation as we get revelation. He doesn't know the future. And so when, he, when, when the church gets revela revelation, when the church begins moving, the enemy begins to a counterattack. And if we're here and we get everything that we need and you get everything that you need in God, you're equipped to face the enemy. But if you don't, then you're not equipped. And you won't be able to deal with what you're going to face. That is why, child of God, and you that desire to be followers of Jesus Christ, that is why you have to stay plugged in. You have to stay plugged into what God's doing. He that hath an ear to hear, let him hear what the Spirit is saying to the church. He said this in, the, in Revelation. He said this coming in the last days. That's why it's so important, every one of us. He that hath an ear to hear, let him hear what's being said. Let, let us hear what God is doing. Let us be a part of what God is doing. Amen. I wonder if we could just lift our hands right now and ask the Lord to help us to be a part of whatever he's doing. Come on, you don't, you don't really have to, be, have to be anywhere right now, in your, but, but just be hungry. That's all that you have to be. God, just let me be a part of what you're doing. God, let me be hearing your voice, God. Let me be knowing what you're doing, God, in this earth, God, I pray in the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. Amen. Stay consistent, child of God. Stay consistent in your walk with God. God. Stay altered. I spoke on Wednesday night. Live an altered life. Stay altered so that your fire never goes out. Stay faithful and stay focused on Jesus and Jesus only. Stay focused on Jesus and Jesus only. He's the one that we got to look to. Look, I love being a part of a church. I, I love that there are things that are happening and there are great men and women that are here and there are great men and women that come through here. But I got to keep my eyes on Jesus. You've got to keep your eyes on Jesus only. You can't look to Jason. You can't look to anybody else. You can't look to any other religion. You've got to keep your eyes on Jesus. Child of God, young person, student, you have got to keep your eyes on Jesus. You've got to learn how to see him. You've got to learn how to focus on him. You've got to learn how to hear him. You that received the baptism of the Holy Spirit, you have been given a gift. And you now are awakened to some things in God that maybe you've never been awakened to before. But you've got to make sure that you use that gift. You've got to make sure that you stay in tune with what God is doing. 
Stay focused on Jesus. Look, it's a great life living for God. Everybody knows that? It's a great life living for God. There are so many great things that happen when you follow Jesus. There are so many miraculous things that happen when you follow Jesus. When you turn your life to him and when you give your life to him, things begin to change. When you step out and say, you know what, I'm going to follow Jesus. I'm going to obey him when he calls me. I'm going to answer when he says to do this or to do that. I'm going to step out when he says step out. I'm going to do that. So many great things are going to happen in your life. You're going to see amazing things. It's a good life living for the Lord. It's not a dull life living for God. Give the Lord a hand clap of praise while I take a drink. Look, if living for God is dull, you're not doing it right. I, I, I'm, I'm honestly, honestly, you, you, if, you're, if it's boring, if you, think that, if you think that walking with God and living for God is boring, I can understand where you can think that. But just let me tell you, you're not doing it right. Because it doesn't, it doesn't mean to be boring. It doesn't need to be boring. It's not supposed to be boring. He said, the thief comes not but to steal and to kill in John chapter 10 and 10. But he said, I have come that they might have life and they might have it more abundantly. So living for God is abundant life. It's exciting living for God. It's exciting. It's wonderful living for God. What do you mean by wonderful, preacher? I mean that it's always full of wonder. It's like, Wow. Whoa, really? That's new. That's different. That's crazy. It's full of wonder. It's full of amazement. I mean, you can even, if you're following after God, you can even step out of your house and you can look around. And, and instead of seeing all of the doom and gloom, you can have your eyes transform like Isaiah did. And you can see that the whole earth is full of his glory. Where before you might have looked out and you might have seen destruction and you might have seen where this person is doing this wrong and this person is doing this wrong and all of these bad things are happening. And sure, you can have your mind on all of that. But if the Lord transforms your thinking, you can step out of your house no matter what's going on and you can say, oh, wow, holy, holy, holy. The whole earth is full of his glory. It's a good life living for God. And there's so many wonderful experiences living for God. There's so many great things that are going to happen to you living for God. But. If we're not careful. We can get into a habit. Of making a temple. Of our experiences. And not. On Jesus only. We don't seek after signs and wonders. The Bible tells us that. We don't seek after signs. Oh, I just want to see signs and wonders. No, you're seeking the wrong thing. Don't seek miracles. Seek the miracle maker. Don't, don't seek to see people saved. Seek the Savior who saves people. Don't seek... For healings, seek the healer. The healer. He's the one who does the healing. Amen. Don't, don't make a temple of our experiences. There's a lot of people that make temples of experiences. No matter how powerful they are. Because the disciples at the top of the mountain tried to. Look what it says in verse number 17 and 4. It says this, then answered Peter and said unto Jesus, and I can imagine, he's just sitting there, he's all kind of pious in his new revelation of theology, and says, it is good for us to have been here. <laughs> this is really good. What's going on here is great. We should make a temple. If you'll let us, we'll make three tabernacles, one for you, and one for Moses, and one for Elijah. <laughs> They witnessed a powerful moment. I don't know of anybody else that have witnessed that powerful of a moment. To see Jesus transfigured before them with Moses and Elijah. And yes, testify of that moment. When you have those experiences with God, testify about those experiences with God. With God. Be a witness of those moments that you have with God for sure. But don't make a temple of that moment. 
Because that moment's going to pass. That moment's going to pass. But there is one that walks beside us that will always remain. And that is Jesus only. Jesus Christ, Hebrews chapter 13 and 8 says, you know, things might change in your walk with God. You might see different things. You might experience different things. But there's one thing that's going to remain consistent in your life, and it's Jesus Christ, the same yesterday, today, and forever. He never changes. Don't make this church your God. Don't make this church just the temple that you worship to. My goodness, no. Jesus only. Jesus only. Turn to your neighbor and say, Jesus only. Jesus only. Amen. They witnessed that powerful moment. It was a powerful moment that they had, but it was wrong for them to try to make a temple or tabernacle of that experience. Sometimes, as the disciples did, we can try to make a temple of the people. Not just the experiences, but sometimes we can try to make a temple of the people that accompanied that experience. Maybe, maybe it's Anthony Mangan, Dylan Morgan, Chris Green, Eli Hernandez, these great men of God, Josh Herring, these great men of God that ministered to us, James McLaughlin. But don't, don't make a temple unto any man. Don't say, well, we can only have a move of God if this person is here, or that person's here, or this person is speaking, or that person's speaking. Guess what? You just made a temple and a tabernacle to a man. And the Bible tells us in the commandments not to have any graven images. Don't have any God before him. Amen. The only temple that we need to make is for who? Jesus only. Jesus only. Isaiah chapter 42 and 8 says, I am the Lord. That is my name. And my glory will I not give to another. Neither my praise to graven images. And I want to use this scripture as a segue into a powerful revelation that the disciples needed schooling on and we need to learn as well from Jesus only. The God of the Old Testament said, I will not give my glory to another. I will not give my glory to another, neither my praise to graven images. The disciples said in verse number four, Lord, it is good for us to be here. And if thou wilt, let us make here three tabernacles. I'm just going to say this, that religious man has been trying to make three tabernacles for one God for centuries. And that's all I'm going to say is that the religious man has been trying to make three tabernacles for one God for centuries. But in the scripture, as soon as they suggested that, there's a voice that came from heaven, and we can read. It spake with a bright cloud overshadowing them, and behold, a voice out of the cloud said, This is my beloved Son, in whom I am well pleased. Hear ye him. This voice spoke to correct them very quickly. This is my beloved Son. This is my manifestation of my word becoming flesh. This is my glory. This is my image. Don't make any other images. Don't make up any other thing. Don't make any other ideologies about God. There is only one God. Amen. Hear, O Israel. I, I said it to Kaylee. I said it in the Shema. Where the, 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 the basis of the Judaic uh, religion is this. Hear, O Israel. The Lord our God is one Lord. And thou shalt love the Lord thy God with all thy heart, with all thy soul, and with all thy strength. There is only one God. Come on, somebody. There's only one God. 
Colossians chapter 1 and 15, speaking of Jesus, Paul says this, who is the image of the invisible God, the firstborn of every creature. He said, for by him were all things created that are in heaven and that are in earth, visible and invisible, whether they be thrones or dominions or principalities or powers. Or all, all things were created by him and for him. He is before all things and by him all things consist. He is the head of the body, the church, who is the beginning, the firstborn from the dead. That in all things he might have preeminence. That he might come first. For it pleased the Father that in him should all the fullness dwell. You see, the philosophies of man have always tried to define God. But we see Jesus only. And Paul said this, going on in Colossians chapter 2 and 8. He said, beware lest any man spoil you through philosophy and vain deceit. After traditions of men, after the rudiments of the world, and not after Christ. For in him dwelleth all the fullness of the Godhead bodily. In him dwelleth dwelleth all the fullness of the Godhead bodily. In Jesus Christ, Jesus was not in the Godhead. The Godhead was in Jesus. Are you getting it? Jesus only. In Him. We sing a song, it's all in Him. Everything that we need, it's all in Him. And He goes on to say, and you are complete in Him. Who? Jesus only. You are complete in Him. Which is the head of all principality and power. In whom you were circumcised with a circumcision made without hands. And I think the preacher preached this last week. Amen. In putting off the bodies of sins of the flesh by the circumcision of Christ. How? Buried with Him by baptism or in baptism. Wherein you're also risen with Him through the faith of the operation of God who raised Him from the dead. And you being dead in your sin and uncircumcision of your flesh hath He quickened together with Him having forgiven you all trespasses passes, blotting out the handwriting of ordinances that was against us, which was contrary to us, and took it out of the way, nailing it to his cross, and having spoiled principalities and powers, he made a show of them openly, triumphing over them. That's why we preach in the name of Jesus only. Why? Why do we do that? We preach the name of Jesus only. If there's anything that you'll ever know about this church, it's a Jesus name church. It's a Jesus name, church. Amen. That's why we preach in the name of Jesus. That's why we pray in the name of Jesus. That's why we praise in the name of Jesus. We worship in the name of Jesus. We baptize in the name of Jesus. Acts chapter 4 and 12. Neither is there salvation in any other. For there is none other name under heaven given among men whereby we must be saved. The name of Jesus. Jesus only. Jesus only. Sister Melissa, if you want to come, I'm going to close with this. This is the last book of the Bible. I want you to understand this because you can look at the Bible and you can look at the scriptures. And the last book of the Bible is the revelation of Jesus Christ. The revelation of Jesus Christ. Now it was called that by no accident. The revelation of Jesus Christ. In fact, in closing, let's go to the first few opening words of our Bible in the book of beginnings, which is the book of Genesis. Genesis chapter 1 and 1 says this, In the beginning, God created the heaven and the earth. In the beginning, there was God. Created the heaven and the earth. And now let's go to the last few verses of our Bible. And this is, if you will go to your, uh, I don't know if other translations do it, but I know the King James Version does it, that if you go to your King James Version Bible, you'll see that most of these words are in red. In Revelation chapter 22 and 13, it says this, I am the Alpha and Omega, the beginning and the end, the first and the last. Who's that? Who's that talking? Jesus only. Blessed are they that do his commandments, that they might have right to the tree of life and may enter in through the gates into that city. For without are dogs and sorcerers and whoremongers and murderers and idolaters and whosoever loveth and maketh a lie. 
Listen, if you stay outside of the confines of the Word of God and stay outside of the confines of Jesus, you're going to find all of these things without. Look, there is deceiving spirits that are loosed in our world. They're deceiving people and being deceived themselves. They're making lies. They're even taking the Word of God and making lies out of it. That's why, what do you need to focus on? On Jesus only. On Jesus only. Because if I focus on anything else, I could get led astray. I could find myself without where the Bible says that there are dogs and sorcerers and whoremongers and murders and idolaters and whosoever loveth and maketh a lie. But he goes on to say, I, Jesus, have sent mine angel to testify unto you these things in the churches. He said, I am the root and the offspring of David and the bright and morning star. And the spirit and the bride say, come. And let him that heareth say, come. And let him that is a thirst come. And whosoever Whosoever will, let him take of the water of life freely. For I testify, now I want you to understand this. Get this, child of God, saint of God, those that are hungry for more of God, get this passage of scripture right here. In the revelation of Jesus Christ, it says, For I testify unto every man that heareth the words of the prophecy of this book, if any man shall add unto these things. God shall add unto him the plagues that are written in this book. And if anyone takes away from the words of the book of this prophecy, God shall take away his part out of the book of life and out of the holy city and from the things which are written in this book. He which testifieth these things saith, Surely I. Who's talking here? Jesus only. Surely I come quickly. And John the Revelator said this, Amen. Even so, come, Lord Jesus. The grace of our Lord Jesus be with you all. Amen. And that, right there, is the end of our Bible. In the beginning, God, ending with the revelation of Jesus Christ. When you get to heaven, We sang that song today, I can only imagine what it will be like. Surrounded by His glory, what will my heart feel? Am I going to dance? Am I going to sing? What, What am I going to do? Am I just going to stand in awe of His presence, of His goodness? I don't know what it's going to be like. I can only imagine. I really can only imagine. And just let me encourage you, saint of God, you need to start to imagine what it will be like. But the one thing that I know for sure, out of everything else and all the beautiful sights that we're going to see when we make heaven our home, the most beautiful sight that we are going to behold is the one that was slain, the lamb that was slain for us. And that's Jesus only. He's the one we're waiting for. He's the one we're worshiping. He's the one that we're looking to see. He's the one that we're wanting to see. Going back to Matthew chapter 17 and 6, when the disciples heard it, they fell on their face and they're sore afraid. And Jesus came and touched them and said, Arise and be not afraid. And when they lifted up their eyes, they saw no man save Jesus only. I pray this morning that we're not just known as Jesus only. And Dad tells me this all the time. I hope that we become known as Jesus everything. He's everything. Is Jesus everything to you in your life right now? I wonder if we could all stand. Is Jesus everything in your home? Is he everything in your marriage? Is he everything in your walk? Is he everything to you? I want you to know this morning, I I, I know that revival services were last week, but revival doesn't have to end. I want you to know that you can receive His Spirit today. 
Whose spirit? The spirit of Jesus only. You can receive his spirit. If there's some people that were here last week and you didn't receive the baptism of the Holy Spirit, well, you can still receive his spirit here this morning. Jesus only. Amen. You can be baptized in his name today. In the name of Jesus. We'll fill up this tank and baptize you in the wonderful name of Jesus Christ for the remission of your sins. In the name of Jesus only. You and I, we can change all of us. We can change our focus today. Amen. Amen. Not, not to anything else. Not to the situations that are surrounding us. Not to all the other things that are happening in our world. But we can get our focus on Him. On who? On Jesus only. What does my sight need to behold? Jesus only. Jesus name right now somebody lift your hands right now in this place the gifts of the spirit in operation the word just was spoke to us amen somebody needs to heed to that word today somebody needs to listen what God has to say today the, 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 it is closing I will say you have to understand that and if you're at a place of decision on what you need to do in your life today is the day today is the day for you to see Jesus only focus on nothing else but Jesus only Jesus only. He's coming for his church. The Bible says that he's coming for his church. Amen. The Lord himself, who? Jesus only. The Lord himself will descend from heaven with the shout and with the voice of the archangel and the trump of God. And the dead in Christ shall rise first. Then we which are alive and remain shall be caught up together with him. Who? Jesus only in the clouds to meet the Lord in the air and so shall we ever be with the Lord Jesus only come on somebody these altars are open today's the day that we get our focus off everything else and we get our focus on Jesus today's the day we get our focus off what's happening in our world what's happening in our own lives and get our focus on him looking unto Jesus the author and the finisher of our faith Jesus only. Come on, somebody. You need to get your focus off of other things right now and get your focus on Jesus only. If it takes you getting on your knees and getting all the distractions away, then let it happen in Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. If you need the baptism of the Holy Spirit today, then the Lord will give you His Spirit. The Lord will give you His Spirit. If you need to be baptized in the name of Jesus, amen. Today we'll baptize you in Jesus' name. But keep your mind on Jesus only, on Jesus only, on nothing else. What did we come here today to focus on? We came here to focus on Jesus and Jesus only. That's it, that's it, that's it, amen. There's a move of God, there's a move of the Holy Ghost, amen, that's happening in these altars right now. In Jesus' name, in Jesus' name, in Jesus' name, in Jesus' name. Reach out for Him this morning. Reach out for Him this morning. That's it, amen. Kids, you experience with an experience with God. You experience an experience with God. And now the enemy would like to get your focus off, but don't get your focus off anything else but Jesus. Don't get your focus on anything else but Jesus. In the name of Jesus, in the name of Jesus, in the name of Jesus, in the name of Jesus. Amen. In the name of Jesus, in the name of Jesus. Amen. In Jesus' name, in Jesus' name, in Jesus' name, in Jesus' name, in the name of Jesus, strengthen my brothers and my sisters today. Strengthen them today. I must understand it's Jesus only. It's Jesus only. In the name that is above every name. The name where there is no other name given among men whereby we must be saved, but by the name of Jesus. Oh, thank you.
Thank you, God. Thank you, God. Thank you, God. That's it. That's it. Amen. Get your mind on Jesus. Don't allow your focus to be on anything else. There'll be too many distractions. There'll be too many other things that try to dissuade you. But get your mind on Jesus. Get your mind on Jesus in Jesus. Amen. That's it. Let's let the Lord have His way. Amen. Don't let that door of opportunity close on your chance to respond. Don't let that door of opportunity close on your, your chance to get closer to Jesus. He said, I come quickly. Jesus said, I'm coming quickly. Today's the day to get to the place where we need to be. Today's the day. Today's the day to get to the place where we need to be. Today's the day. There's an invitation that's out to everybody. And today is that day. Amen. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. Don't give up. Amen. Let's continue to pray. Pray for somebody to keep their focus on the Lord. Reach out to somebody. Pray for somebody that's beside you if you're comfortable and if they're comfortable. Amen. Amen. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. In the name of
it, church. Let's just keep seeking after him. Amen. Let's just keep seeking after him right now. Let's just keep focusing on him right now. If you've got to wade through whatever you've got to in your mind and keep your focus on Jesus and him only, do that today. Keep your focus on him and him only. Keep your focus on Jesus and Jesus only. God. Maybe you've been focusing too much on your problems. You've been focusing too much on other things. Keep your focus on Jesus. Oh, there's a move of the Holy Ghost that's in this house. There's a move of the Spirit of God that is in this house right now. Oh, come on somebody. Don't focus on anything else but Jesus. Don't focus on anything else but Jesus. in this place this morning. He's not done. He's not done. Oh, just let him minister to you. If you keep your focus on him, he'll minister to you. If you keep your focus on him, he'll change you. He'll transform you. Keep your focus on him.